Hey, what's up, guys? Tony here, and you're watching some more MLB 14 Road of the Show. This is with Chester Adams, and we're just going to take a quick look at where I stand in the organization after three games of pitching. So you can see I got a 2-0 record, two quality starts, one complete game, which was the shutout, 23 strikeouts in 21 and a third innings pitched. And so I'm, I'm definitely not near the top, but I am making some noise in the organization. Welcome back to our minor league pregame show as we move closer to the start of Eastern League action with tonight's installment of the Bowman Prospect Spotlight. Chester Adams is in the glow, and what a dominant performance he put together in his last start. He had opposing batters off balance throughout and racked up a boatload of strikeouts. Yeah, he just looked like he was really in control out there. And you know, sometimes you can tell a guy is going to dominate from the moment he sets foot on the rubber. They just exude confidence and their body language kind of says, he ain't touching me today. That's what I saw in him. I, and even though I was a hitter in my career, it was really fun to watch him make those other guys look silly. We'll see if he's still in top shape in this matchup here today. All right, lineups and first pitch are coming up next. Stay tuned for that right here on the show. All right, so here we go. We got ourselves a first batter in our fourth start in our double-A career right now. And at this point so far, everything's kind of been yeah, more or less cruising for me. I don't know how you guys are doing in your pitching or uh, in your Road to the Show series. But at this point, you know, it's four games into my career. And uh, things are going well. I've had some good games. As you saw, I had a 12 strikeout game my last game. Uh, but the outing before that, I think I only went like four innings. So as a pitcher, you're subject to these ebbs and flows of the game, as any player would be. It, it seems to be a little bit more dramatic uh, for a pitcher just because of the fact that, especially as a starter, you're, you're only pitching every fifth day. So... You, if you have a bad game, you have to wait until your next start before you can have yourself a good game. And the other, the other factors, it's like when your play is a as a fielder, like you're in control for the most part of your character. You control where he goes. You control what base he throws to. Now you're not in control of some of these things like randomized errors and uh, like fielding errors, throwing errors, things like that. So you're not in control of those things. Those are sort of out of your control. But for the most part, when you're throwing, you can you can pretty much know exactly if you're going to throw an error or not. You know, you're, you're just like, you can pick your meter. You can make sure that you can, you're going to put it in the safe zone. Now, whether or not you throw that guy out, that's completely up to your stats. Because sometimes you might get to the ball quickly, you might release it quickly, but your arm strength's not... Um, high enough to throw the guy out because the guy might be fast or whatever. So anyways, like I said, for the most part, you're in total control of your performance from your hitting to your fielding to your base running. You are in control. Like your, It is your destiny, and you have full control of your own destiny. And you can see right here, as a pitcher, there are so many things that are outside of your control. Like all you can do is try to make the best pitches you can. And then once that ball is out of your hand, the control of the game is out of your hands. So you've got bad umpires. Um, you've got hitters that just tee off on everything that you throw. And you have fielders that you saw in the first inning. You have fielders who make throwing errors. They'll make errors. Or... My other favorite thing is is if they just don't make plays on balls. Like the infielders right now are pretty notorious for not making plays on balls. Like <laughs> if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I was picking on my AAA third baseman yesterday, like tweeting out, you know, um, in PS4 shares, screenshots. And it, it was just ridiculous. Like the team made four errors in one game that I was pitching, and it was driving me nuts. Like my brain was exploding. So... It's interesting um, how how with a pitcher, like like I was saying, everything is out of your control. Like once you pick that pitch, and once you've thrown that pitch, and you've if you've thrown it to the best of your ability, it's completely chance after that. It is up to the batter's tendencies. It's up to the umpire's variable strike zone. And here's the thing about the strike zone. Um, I actually went and I got really sick and tired of the variable strike zone. I have not liked the variable strike zone since 
the inception of the variable strike zone because at first I thought, you know what, hey, that would be really cool. It's like each umpire has their own specific and unique strike zone that you have to get used to. It just adds another element of real of realism to it. Like in baseball, like as a hitter, you know, and as a pitcher, like you just each umpire has his or her, his or well, his or her. I haven't actually seen a female umpire in uh, any of the league games I played in. Uh, but for uh, say for softball's sake, uh, we won't be very inclusive. But so his or her strike zone differs from someone else's. Their interpretation is different. They view it um, however they view it. And so as a player, you have to get used to that. As a pitcher, as a fielder, or as a batter, you have to get used to that. I thought that was a great idea. The execution of it is very, very poor because with the variable strike zone, within each umpire, they, there, there's a variability of the strike zone throughout the game. So there's, I mean, in real life, there are consistent umpires and there are inconsistent umpires. And so you really hate inconsistent umpires. Like if a guy's going to call a pitch six inches outside, like this pitch, like, like that's a strike. Like you look at it and you're like, where does that miss? Like you'll see right here, half the ball is in the strike zone. You're like, that's a strike. And this is the shit kicker, is that the reason why I bring up the strike zone is because I got tired of the variable strike zone from three years ago or whenever it was. They, I think it was like three seasons ago they introduced it. So I always turn it off. I always turn it on the, quote, perfect strike zone. So they're supposed to call it as the letter of the strike zone. And that strike zone, these umpires are so bad in this game. Um you know, it's not really a big problem when you're when you're a hitter, uh, because you know what you get those those corner calls in your favor a lot. You're just like, well, that wasn't a strike, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> As a pitcher, though, you're just like, I need that strike because the batters, for the most part, are really they're they're fairly decent. Uh, double A right now, though, what I've noticed is that actually in double A, uh, I am able to strike out a lot of guys. So it's easy to fool some guys. But when I got promoted to triple A, things were different. And you'll see that when I get promoted to triple A. I think the next video I'll do um, is I'll show you when I get promoted to triple A because uh, I only pitched six, six games. And this is game four of six in the minors. So uh, what I prefer to do is I know like guys like uh, Bob Train and, and Bay, if I think they show a lot of what they're going through. Uh, but if you've been around my channel around, you know that like I'll play, I'll, I'll have a game, and then um, I'll like record a game, and then they'll play a bunch of games that I play, and then I'll kind of come back to here. here's where I'm at in the season. So uh, as a pitcher, I think it's a little bit more difficult to show you every single outing. Uh, unless I started recording them live and like cutting them up or something like that, but um, or streaming them, I could start streaming a little bit more. It's something I should get into. Um, so, anyways, it's just like I'm at that point <laughs> in the show, and I always get this point. I don't know if you guys get to this point as well, but I'm at that point in the show right now where uh, I almost like have to put down the controller because pitching is one of those really like satisfying things like when you pitch well it's super satisfying and it's addicting and you want to go out and you want to dominate another team but at the same time it's also one of those things that is the most maddening experience of your life just because of the fact that you like i was saying earlier you come out you pitch every fifth day and you might have a stretch of you know three or four games where you just get shelled and that's the nature of the beast. Or maybe your your fielders don't field for you. Or they make a lot of errors or something. You know, something happens that's out of your control. And it happens, you know, four or five, three or four or five appearances. And you're talking like about a 15, 20 minutes or so per appearance that you're playing. So you're spending like 20 minutes per game that you play getting your ass kicked. And it sucks. And as a fielder, what you can do is you can actually just go and jump right into another game. And you might go 0 for 4. And the next game you go for 2 for 3. Boom. All the pain's gone. So, anyways, I pitched six strong, eight hits, seven strikeouts, uh, and I gave up a couple runs. I have to look at that again. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I shall talk to you guys later.